Is. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the invitation to be here, and thank uh, you very much for the translation. I'm really uh, happy to uh, listen to that later. I was. Uh, uh, I was hoping and uh, and uh, estimating. I was my my top my topic is kissing hot tips and techniques. Uh, it was uh, th that I was asked one if you ever wanted to do a talk at the camp. Yeah, I said yeah, awesome, great. And the thing next talk I thought was oh, shit. What should I talk about? And I because I, I didn't really have any idea because I have no idea of anything basically. And then I uh, we, then we had the idea well. And they told me, well, how about you uh, talk about how, may, how to make complicated things easier? And that's uh, one of the things I'm working on uh, a lot. And we have top, uh, pretty complicated topics, and it's pretty co difficult to get it to the people. And that's um, exactly what I do all the time. And uh, that's, yeah, that's what I'm talking about now. So that's my talk now. Kissing. That uh, that's uh, kissing is obviously from keep it short and simple ing, uh, and it's because it's um, uh, obviously um, to uh, to make get all these complex things into an easy way, and and everybody who got, hoped to get uh, some tips for kisses or something like that, because if we if we have time afterwards, I have the standard uh, literature about that. The art of kissing, and uh, this is uh, uh, this was uh, published in 1991, and I and it really uh, got rid of a block because the Dr. Summer team, the German German uh, magazine, uh, always said uh, that there's no uh, exp uh, there's no uh, tutorial how to kiss, and I say yes, of course. See, so that's uh, we can do this together. I might read about this, um, but the best is uh, everybody finds a partner or a female partner, and uh, then when they will have a look at this. So first of all, keep it as keep it short and simple. That's that's the easiest and. Uh, and I'm not saying anything surprising about that. That works uh, better with a um, lot of lube. I have a very uh, humid uh, way of speaking, uh, so either, um, otherwise everybody in front of me should, uh, um, um, the, the distance is quite far, so I'm quite loud about that, so anyway, otherwise other people would have to get some rain gear with them. Um, with spit, yes, saliva. That's not only what comes out of my mouth, but that's also the principle uh, how I keep uh, keep things short and simple. We uh, go through things uh, letter by letter so that it uh, key, key sticks in your head and everybody can work the same way as I do. The first thing is the S uh, in German uh, is um, Sachverstand, uh, knowledge. You obviously have to have an idea what to uh, what you want to explain. That's a great idea because I don't really have it. I've uh, I've got half knowledge, a lot of uh, half knowledge, but um, I don't have to. Really, I, I can't really. I, I've got to learn everything again. I don't have any knowledge about things, and if I want to explain things, um, so first of all, you've got to learn what you want to uh, explain. Then, so talk about it with about people, phone, or make phone calls, read about it um, the, with people uh, from people who really have understood the topic. And if you manage to do this, that's the basic. Uh, um, so we, yeah, if, if people know these things by heart, um, this 
then you uh, can do it half wholeheartedly and uh, um, then you can also answer any question and really into it and that's uh, very important to have this kind of knowledge. Uh, then you have the P for publicum or audience. Um, it's totally important that you uh, have an uh, idea about the, the audience. You, uh, like uh, an, an editor at the mouse where I work, you've got to pick up the people where they are. That means uh, you, uh, basically you always have to uh, assume that the people know as much as you do, then that's jack shit. And um, they sit in front of the TV and uh, where I where I work, uh, you know, if I make a, a TV show, I make them make basically for me, so I know exactly what the target audience, and I know exactly what I like, what I don't like. So um, if I make these stories, I can I, I can make them basically in the way that I'm interested. I would be interested in, it, and that's a good good thing. And that what uh, interests me is how, gladly what inter interests the audience as well. So uh, anyway, it's still quite important to think about what's the life reality of people. The uh, grammar, uh, um, uh, elementary school uh, children are totally different from people who, who from people visiting the camp. If you want to talk about Diffie Hellman public key exchange, um, um, I can talk about on a different level here than uh, on the TV, but maybe even not. Maybe not. I don't know who, show, show of hands, who knows John Oliver? A few. John Oliver is a British comedian who lives in the US and worked together with John Stewart and was a correspondent of John Stewart. John Stewart had st stopped his show recently and uh, John, Stewart did John, John Oliver took the um, uh, they takes different topics, and it was and so I took a topic that is uh, that's popularity is pretty much at the bottom, uh, uh, quite close to uh, skin disease and mathematics, and this topic was uh, surveillance and surveillance by the state and this kind of things, a topic many people here find interesting. Uh, but if you leave the camp, it's uh, yeah, well, it's not really interesting to anybody. Uh, to, to not that many, many people at least. And John Oliver said, um, it's important that you get informed and you talk about it and that you can uh, uh, you know, make some decisions about it. And he visited Snowden in Moscow and uh, said, uh, said Snowden, it's great what you're doing, but uh, what you, uh, that you inform the public. Uh, and uh, it's great that you uh, are sitting in mo a room in Moscow without uh, mirror windows uh, for uh, a couple of months or years, but how long ever. But the problem is that it interests nobody. And then he showed uh, some clips from the normal people on the street and asked people uh, uh, who Edward Snowden was and what he did, and there were really stupid answers. And then he. Um, talked um, and then he talked yeah talked about how the how to get all this topic this huge complex topic of uh, yeah, yeah, of things um, to how to get it to people and it ends with the fact that it goes uh, to, that he's talking about dick pictures uh, pictures of penises and uh, he uh, went through all NSA programs and uh, with Snowden and asked the uh, question what is is this, how is this relevant if I want to send uh, pictures of my dick to my girlfriend or someone else and funnily enough uh, when they talked about uh, on the street uh, asking people on the on the street about if the government can see pictures of your of my penis people were like that's a scandal and they you know they can't they can't just you know see that 
and suddenly it was, uh, there was some passion about, about it and uh, for the topic surveillance, of surveillance and that wasn't there before and uh, you see with how that, uh, that that is important and take the people and uh, to explain to them what the topic is um, what this, how, how relevant is this is for their life and pe penis pictures doesn't work all the time but in this case it worked very well And that's a very interesting point in general, that you always need to find a hook where you can you know, hang a topic from. And that leads us to the U of spit, which means um, for change your way of thinking, or think around, think about, or you know, inspect. When I work on a subject or I write a program for this macht a, and I've got a, I've got a certain subject and I need to answer a question or a story, the first thing I do or the third after knowledge and um, thinking about what I want to see, I need to find a hook. And I always have to think of a scene from a great film, there's something about Mary. Anybody know it? It's great. Everybody should. All the hands should be in the air now. There's something about Mary. There's one scene. It's um, it it's during um, during fishing, and when I think of a hook to hang the topic from, I always have to think of this scene. I'm I'm going to leave it running for a bit, so it burns in. It's not always easy to find this kind of hook, but it helps if you if you actually you know work on the things and turn turn them around. I mean, the word well, picking something up doesn't you know come from anywhere, and you you have to turn around and look at it from from all perspective. That's not a penis; that's a sausage. Just to make sure that there are no miscomprehensions, Christoph from the program with the mouse, you used to have the idea of showing how this kind of sausage is made in a film. And yes, I have to admit, there are more interesting subjects. He thought so as well. And I want to show how this sausage mush is pushed into the, yeah, you don't, yeah. It's not very attractive. But Christoph found something amazing. He looked at sausages, box sausages, and he noticed something. He noticed that all these sausages had this kind of nudge thing. This, you know, this, you, you see what I mean. He first thought it was, was, you know, a mistake, a production error, but it was, you know, all of them had it. And suddenly he had the hook to hang the story from, because it started with a question, you know, this very discovery that, you know, it was like, a, like an enlightenment. I'm looking at how, you know, I've, I've, I've had looks at these kind of sausages for 10 years, and I never noticed that all of them have this kind of ridge. And suddenly Christoph comes along and he says, it's, it's the same for all of them. And we're going to find out why. And suddenly you had a, an idea in your head, a question that you'd never asked yourself before. And you, all, you wanted to know the answer. Why do all the sausages have this kind of ridge? And now Christoph could make the film ex pretty much as he planned, showing how the sausage is made. And as, as a spectator, I, I always waited for the moment when, this, when the ridge comes in. And finally it came, and that was because... Should I, should I say, or do you want to watch the film? <laughs> Go to the website of the mouse. The, the film's there. No, I'm, I don't have it here. We can't watch it now. Sorry. Oh. You've got Wi-Fi, haven't you? What? 
No, I'm not connected. Anyhow, there's, a, you know, during the process of making these, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you, but there's a, it, this bridge comes in, and I'm going to give it to you as homework or as tent work. So, the important thing is looking at things properly. I'm going to just, I, I always just leave the computer. I always work on the computer, but when I want to find a story, I leave. I leave the computer behind. I, I start, you know, doodling and drawing things, drawing subjects. That's one of our recent things in the in the program. It's a witch house where Lumpy spends his uh, his lunch break, and that's how I make a lot of things. I just doodle and think about you know think where I end up, see what it, where I end up, what what happens. It's really old school, but it helps to find a new perspective. And that's what we do often at this Ah, It's usually a kind of mad perspective, not well, not not mad, but but just you know a bit kooky. Just you know, just just looking at, th at things slightly differently, like. For instance, uh, looking at a cup or a glass, when you look at it from above, it has the shape of a circle. But if you look at it from the side, it's a square. It's a completely different shape. And that's the same with all subjects. Uh, depending on how you look at it, you see something else. And I'm not telling you anything new here, but you know, realizing this helps tremendously in associating and, you know, just thinking about things, turning them over in your head and, you know, what happens if I go further? And this kind of association is my technique of finding a hook. That's how I always try to find new aspects, new ways of looking at a, at a thing. It also helps to keep in mind what a very wise man said, Yoda. Yoda said, you must unlearn what you have learned. In the second movie, <laughs> I have the classical way of counting. When he teaches Luke how to use the force, Daiwa tells him, you know a lot, but you have to forget everything you know. And this is very similar when you want to explain something to people. You have to learn a lot of, or have to know a lot about the subject, but then there's a time where you have to forget all of that and start anew. Because when you forget things, you can look at the problem from a, you know afresh, and might find a way of making it interesting, and so that other people can see it who also have this kind of fresh look at on the subject. There's an author, Roger von von Oech, 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 American. He, um, you know, he busies himself a lot with creativity and he wrote his subject the creative kick it's pretty old but very interesting and he also gives lectures and he told me that um, one of the uh, one of the exercises in these lectures is drawing a line he draws a line at the rear of his room and there are teams he forms teams of people all of them gets a stack of paper and he makes them fold as many aeroplanes and throw them over the line as possible in five minutes. And most of the teams start folding. And from time to time, the the winning team doesn't fold any, but just, you know, just crumples up the paper and throws it across the line, which is the most, you know, is the clever, most clever way technically, but it's... You know, most people just 
just start making a make an airplane, but they they can't forget this this idea of you know folding paper airplanes. But it sometimes helps to forget things. So forgetting what you normally think on a subject bring, can bring you very far. So um, this leads me to the program for the break. Yes, I have a program for the break. A few days ago, I saw a tweet from Katarina Meyer. Is she here? Hello, Katarina. So um, I know that it's really embarrassing to get called out. You can sit down. <laughs> Stay seated. I don't didn't bring the mouse with me, but Lumpy, I didn't bring Lumpy either. Oh, it's too hot for him. He can't. Uh, how can he sweat without uh, breathing? And it's losing a little sand, and also he's losing a little sand and getting repaired. We're back to the studio soon. We talked about the um, memory recently and uh, about uh, I, found, I, re I recently found a book, uh, Life's Little Destruction Book, and uh, Katarina wanted to talk about this. I found this recently as a small uh, break, and I wanted to read about is, uh, what makes uh, living together easier. So the rule number 45 is develop a convenient memory. It's really good for uh, work if you want to f f remember things for work. Uh, um, but it's also uh, good for um, forgetting things from time. Rule two hundred seven: When you're done, when you with your dr with your garbage, stick it under the chair. I'll leave it uncommented. Um, the rule two seventeen two seventy one: Remember that is. Well, everything was better years ago. Uh, this first first time uh, here today, right? It's. I hope it's better than last time. Um, then something I remember. I, I do. I do often uh, enough tell long, boring stories. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's uh, I'm not my fault. Uh, my my. Uh, I'm not. Uh, Deliberately doing that, but it's that's how it is. Last rule, 222. Apologize for a lot. I apologize a lot, but don't change. This is not. It's not good to give applause here. It sounds uh, almost sounds like it's okay that if I do this, but okay. This was all a small intermezzo, so th thanks for you, Katarina. Welcome. It also uh, belongs here. And we always uh, take uh, people who write us seriously, uh, no matter which channel. Uh, the next point is a very important uh, come of very important point, come camouflage. Camouflage is well camouflage and uh, camouflage is very important if you do uh, knowledge shows as we do because most of the time people with knowledge uh, associate knowledge with school and school is associated with boring uh, being boring and uh, being boring is associated with turning off and that's what we really don't want to do so uh, we want to camouflage this knowledge somehow and uh, this works uh, with uh, liver patty uh, liver patty or liverwurst is uh, uh, I mean, meant metaphorically but i have to tell a smaller but long story and my parents had dogs, uh, among them bobtails. One bobtail, uh, his bob, the bobtail's name was Benjamin, and Benjamin had long he hair also on his bum, as all every bobtail had. The uh, prob probably, probably uh, we call him the the breath of death because he had really bad breath before in these last years of his life. Benjamin didn't only have long hair, but also, um, uh, what do you call it? Diarrhea. And, um, yeah, what? Uh, something from the audience. 
uh, keep it for yourself for the moment. Uh, if Dairmira meets long hair and the, the long hair is dry and it's, you know, in the, then you have some sort of corp. But if more diarrhea comes out, there's more pressure. And my parents, I, I visit my parents on Sunday for breakfast uh, because uh, the and the the uh, region around the area where the um, where, where Benjamin always lies uh, was painted white uh, recently, and Benjamin was lying there while we were sitting uh, there, and suddenly there were funny noises. Benjamin got up, the got uh, walked around, and suddenly made there was loud. <laughs> <laughs> the white walls weren't as white anymore. There was a mix, <laughs> it was some sort of mixing technique. Uh, so the, the pressure was too high. The, um, the, um, uh, yeah, the, um, Intestines cleared themselves and everything just blew out. And why don't you give, I asked, why don't you give the doc these tablets you got from the, the veterinarian, you know, that it goes away? I mean, the diarrhea. And my mother said, he spits them out and he doesn't eat them. And then uh, we, while we talked about it, that we could try it in a way that we uh, take the tablet and mix it uh, with liver patty and give it to the dog. And what can I say? It's, uh, it's totally easy and every dog owner knows it. The dog, um, the dog didn't care about it at all. The, uh, uh, the diary was blown away because the dog just had the liver patty and uh, I had learned a lot for life because lev liver patty helps to swallow bitter pills or uh, information or facts. And that's what I mean with camouflage. So that means that if you found a hook, so you, you have uh, also have a hint how to camouflage the things. And uh, so people who don't want to hide the things, people so that people don't, who don't want to know about this at all, they still stay tuned. Uh, think about the penis pictures in this case. Um, this was some sort of camouflage as well. Yeah. Also, it's quite good. I don't know if you notice the uh, by regarding too much information and uh, uh, disgust. disgust is a great uh, is a really big emotion, and it always helps to uh, coat uh, things in emotions. And and someone makes a, a joke, or someone picks their nose, and Parents, uh, you know, are disgusted a little, and they have a look, look at it, and tell their kids, kids "No, you don't do that at home." And at the same time, the kids don't also only remember this uh, feeling of disgust, but also, um, I always also say that we people. Um, you know, I also say that we're people who have dry noses. Uh, people, well, people in general have dry noses and not wet noses, and that's not dry. And um, um, wet nose monkeys uh, have snot running down their nose, and and so on. That means that you have to take things into your hands, and uh, yeah, for different, uh, we look at it from different angles, and don't. Stick it uh, under uh, under chairs like uh, the gum, but just eating it up. Ugh, yeah, what? I want to see you when you just you know touch something and there's a there's a lot of boogers. That's even more disgusting. That's quite interesting. Boogers or you know nose hair, they're like a filter. Every time I um when we visit a foreign country with a mouse and make a special edition, I always, at the first night, I can always see how the air quality is. There are places like Delhi, the boogers are very black at night. 
And there are places like Brasilia, there, they, where boogers have a very different color, more like gold. You, you can see how the hair works and how they try to filter the dust particles so they don't reach the lungs. A very good gauge, so uh, boogers, that's one reason why you should look at them more often. So boogers are a sign of how highly developed we are. We are dry nose apes. The next letter, K, for n no panic. I know it's technically two words, but uh, you know, no panic. You have a subject. You've you've thought it through. You know, in front of whom you're speaking, and you've forgotten everything. You found a hook, and then there's a big moment. You have to have uh, the, the 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 talk, and you're you're scared as fuck. Well, at least that's how how it works for me. In the worst case, you get diarrhea again. It doesn't have to be that way. The most important thing is to think to yourself, you don't have to be afraid. Everybody else would be scared as fuck as well. So even if things go wrong, it, it's not a biggie. It's not a bad thing. You don't have to be afraid of mistakes because mistakes make you discover new things. Um, you know, to quote Yoda again, anger, fear, aggression, the dark side are they. Once you start down the dark path, forever will it dominate your destiny. So please, no fear. That's from a third part, incidentally. Shortly before he dies. Mistakes are good because something new always rises from mistakes. When I was on holiday, I was in Sweden, we looked at the Vasa Museum. The Vasa was a giant ship. Imagine Pirates of the Caribbean, but for real. The Vasa was immensely expensive. It cost a quarter of the Swedish state budget in 1620 when it was built. The Vasa Wharf was the biggest employer. They, it took two years. So many people only took two years to build this, this massive ship. It's a bit dark because the museum is a bit dark, but I think you can see it. And it was massive. The Swedish king uh, had this, you know, grudge with the Polish king and wanted to buy, uh, wanted to build warships. And he noticed that the Polish ship, Polish, Polish king built a ship as well, a ship with two cannons, and so the Swedish wanted one as well. And he also wanted the ship to be alive. And it should look pretty as well. And so it was built in a you know, very slim with a lot of statues and lots of decoration at the end. After two years, it was finally there, the big moment when the ship was sent to water. All of Stockholm was on their, on their feet. The Vasa you know, hissed its sails and there was a small breeze. And the ship leaned a bit to its side. The cannon, cannon holes were open, so water got in. After 20 minutes in the water, the Vasa had sunk. <laughs> really embarrassing. The only thing you could still see was um, was one of the one of the was some of the rigging. It was sewn off after a few days. So the king spent a lot of money and made a massive mistake because he didn't listen to the Dutch constructors and wanted to do his own thing. And, you know, you think, oh, hopefully something like that never happens to me. But the great thing is, if this giant mistake hadn't happened, and a lot of people had died at the time, but if, ha if it hadn't happened, uh, the, this ship wouldn't exist today. It's the only ship that's in such good condi condition from the from that period, it's it's a real testimony. You can see how people lived, how they used to build their ships. Nothing else like this exists, and only because this because of this massive mistake. So mistakes can can turn to something beautiful, and even if it's only a, a massive museum that's built around a ship. We too make mistakes in our stories. And they're uh, really embarrassing. This happened to me recently.
I don't know if any of you saw it. I made a film about what what A4 paper is. You know, you all read it every day, but nobody knows it. Yeah, you <laughs> very funny. It's a stupid, you know, I reversed some numbers. I don't know why I didn't notice, but it happens, and it sucks. But it, there's no point being angry about it. it. It gets changed, and the next time it's aired, it will have been the only mistake. But it happens. It happens to Armin as well. He, he made a film why um, the, uh, the gift ribbon, you know, curls up when you when you go over it with a scissor and he did his research he talked to scientists and they told him yeah it's about the heat that develops when the you know when the scissor rubs over the risen he made a film it aired and there was a lot of mail uh, amongst others from RWT Aachen and they were like yeah it's completely wrong it's got nothing at all to do with heat we can show it to you under the microscope it's a it's a shift of material of matter, so the so there's you know shift the matter around a bit, and that's why it curls up, and that was massively embarrassing. But he did the only right thing. He made a second film, and the second film started by saying we we did this ash on our heads, but luckily there are people who told us that, and I mean use it as an opportunity to retell the story and correctly this time. And this was great because he kept his credibility. He didn't, you know, didn't try to sweep it under the rug. He said, yeah, it happens. And it, we mustn't forget that with the same topic, he was able to fill two films. And speaking of which, speaking of mistakes, And, uh, meat in terms of uh, you know dead animals and you're you're all welcome to the uh, to the meet and greet over at the uh, the family city at the down at the slides I'll be there at seven o'clock and we can do what you do seven o'clock and the last letter E. Entertainment, terrible word, but I didn't think of another word. Uh, entertainment is very important because, uh, with Wissen Machen, for example, um, it's. Uh, what kind of knowledge program is how? How is it to get people to uh, get some knowledge and. For me, it is, uh, uh, to be honest, more uh, less the the handing on knowledge, but it's more the entertainment. It's uh, important to have fun to watch them, and uh, I'm not sure how you think about it, but basically, it's um, that our brains are wired in a way that uh, they're not interested in boring things, and uh, if it's something is boring, it disappears very fast. So that it's. So it's very important uh, that if you present things, uh, you can uh, uh, entertain the people a little. Um, and, um, that's also language. Uh, I think it's very important to not stay in your uh, jargon, uh, but to speak in a manner that you have the feeling that it uh, right, uh, it reaches the people uh, with sending with a mouse there's a special uh, way of talking um, um, that uh, the, the, and that is uh, that's uh, the way we do it is that we speak live and you don't uh, write a text about it and that's uh, and that's a special certain type of uh, uh, stories. Telling stories, thanks. Um, uh, so, uh, if you make a, if you do it, you know, if you do this film, there's always uh, seven, ga several gates of uh, of uh, handing things off with the editors, and then you do this, and then the raw cut, and then the next cut, and while the film runs, you um, basically say what you want to say later uh, in the final cut. But so, 
Um, Earlier, the stories in the Numida Maus were uh, in a way that there were only pictures and music, and then uh, then someone said, "Yeah, you're making your kids speech loads, and that's why we said something about it. And that uh, then Armin went to uh, get Muntefering, the guy back then, and. Um, and showed him the film, and they they talked about it, and get said is uh, do this exactly that uh, the way that uh, to do it, and he went into the he went to the studio and do you know talked to uh, read it and. Um, and the, the editor said, well, that's not not how you showed me. You spoke it totally different. I want to have it differently. And then, then basically, the first take, the improvised version, uh, he just like color, easily spoke into the microphone. That was the speech style we they uh, have in the mouse. And that means that we... Um, We don't go into some sort of meta uh, level. We only want to describe what you can see. Um, that makes it very compact on the other one, one hand, um, because you uh, you know see and hear things uh, at the same time, and you're pretty concentrated, and you don't uh, move on and 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 go to other things uh, in your mind. Uh, your mind doesn't wander because if you speaking long sentences uh, is easier and uh, in s instead of concentrating and saying a small sentence now the sentence comes that I'm really happy to hear in the translation we're uh, all pretty small cans and yes that is funny from a translator's perspective but that's uh, not Everybody is uh, likes this, uh, page long sentences when so that's the, what Kant uh, wrote about, and I was really annoyed when I studied philosophy. Um, don't so don't do any Kant sentences. Um, that's just the way it is, and that's very important. That's also important that you uh, if you. Uh, do presentations like here, such as here. I don't like it very much, but uh, there's a lot of uh, you see uh, presentations with small tables and very they're so small that you can't see it all, and there's far too many information. And then you know to just reduce and just keep the sense, but uh, reduce it very small, to, to down to very small uh, things and uh, very basic things. And uh, if some sort of uh, show stops or some talk stops, presentation stops, and I think I have the feeling that's too bad that it's ended now. And uh, it's uh, that's much better than uh, if, I th if I regret that. It's much better than if I think, well, it could finally end. Thanks, thank God, it's over. So um, I th hope some of that spit that you could take with you some of that spit uh, that I use to uh, keep the things fluid. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was the translation. Thank you for listening. Uh, my name is Julian. And mine is Philip. And you can give us feedback under Twitter, hashtag cccamp15en, uh, or come back to the booth and say hi, or whatever. Thank you very much. Hey, we have still, we have still 15 minutes left, uh, so that wasn't... So we can uh, do also do uh, questions and answers, of course, instead of choosing partners for kissing. No questions, no answer, no questions. Then say, Kuna, yeah, there's a question in the middle. Take the, take the microphone for the, for the questions. I want to know which aspect of spit, uh, where, you know, where these stories you tell, how they differentiate themselves from, from much like Galileo. Uh, Galileo. <laughs> uh, 
I've I I um, research on something of of media. Oh, you got me on the wrong foot there. I don't watch Galileo. But what do you think? When you watch Galileo, I don't know. It's it's similar to your stories. Wow. Well, in any case, after watching it, none of you likes or watch it. You don't feel like you've learned anything. And after um, a Sachgeschichte, you know, story like it's told in Zeno mit der Maus, you do. If he said understanding. Well, maybe it's just bit, or maybe just the K and the SPU is missing. I, I imagine it might be that. And everybody does it differently, to be honest. And I think there are lots of people who think who like Galileo better than what this Macht A does or Zendo mit der Maus. And it's important to know. It's there are there are lots of different tastes, and I can't I can't satisfy them all at the same time. I can't I can't please everybody. The only thing I can do is to only do things that I like, and you know that way I know that at least somebody, will, one person, will like it. And I think that uh, Galileo is, you know, Galileo too has. That there's a reason why it's there, but it's not. It doesn't cater to my taste. <laughs> Any more questions? The thing about the liver sausage, you know, it's it's still in our heads. The question is about sea camouflage. We have a great vegan vegetarian restaurant. I knew it. It was just metaphorical. No, of course it was metaphorical, but I learned that you don't swallow the hook when the camouflage doesn't fit. Do you have any kind of, did you do any research of, of what you need to wrap around it? Maybe some some tips, what, what, what uh, people, you know, what different people like. I think people like to laugh more than they like to cry. Now we could make a make an experiment in this matter ah, and have a have a program that's really sad and you know gets people close to tears and see how much sticks. Probably not as much, maybe a little. But the important thing is that you try to make you know give flavour to the subject. Maybe that's the right term. Humor makes things a lot more, a lot easier, and you know, does, not taking yourself seriously but taking the, the subject seriously helps. And admitting mistakes helps, or you know, allowing mistakes helps. But it's always, it always depends on the uh, on the subject at hand. It always has to has to be attractive, and that's what what important. But how you do it depends on the on the concrete case. Maybe we should make a sort of workshop next time where we, ex you know, look at different subjects and see what, what comes up. You, there's no one-size-fits-all solution. Why do you do? Why do you make this sending with demos? Good question. The answer is pretty simple, actually, because we have so many questions and noticed that, or at least I did, in early years, that neither my parents nor my teachers nor the, the priest could answer them all. 
And uh, at some point, you start looking for answers yourself. And if you're lucky, the answers you find are, you know, pretty presentable. And then you can make this sort of program and, well, Nowadays, there are different ways of um, of sending these things, but we mostly make them because we have lots of questions, and we get lots of questions, and th that's those are the reasons, and because it's fun, to be honest. That's the most important thing in everything you do, that you make sure you have fun doing it, and that you have a good time doing it. And for this matter, uh, for example, I can make loads of chaos and I don't even have to clean up after myself. So there's um, the set theory, there's a huge set of things you like to do and a huge set of things that you, you do well. And the things you do well don't always have to be this, the things you like to do and the other way around. Like cleaning, cleaning, cleaning my room, I'm really good at it but I hate it. I like to bake but I'm terrible at it. But when you have these two sets and there's a, um, they overlap at some point, and you find something you like and you can you do well. When you found that, then there's really not a lot that can go wrong, and you have a lot of fun. And for Armin, Christoph, and myself with Zenometer Mouse and with Wismat R and lots of people who, who work there, it's tremendous fun. I'd love to know how the uh, the uh, curb in the sausage goes uh, works, and there's the, you can't have a look. You can't find the um, the 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 show online. I I can't find it, and there's an, it's not online, uh, unfortunately. And I really would like to know how it how the how it goes. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> And uh, no, I, I think that it's uh, so the sausages are hung up uh, somehow, and uh, there where they are hanged, the um, bar uh, presses in the uh, soft mass of the sausage, and then it when it gets hot and harder, then it uh, you know then it uh, the this uh, small thing stays. So that's about it. And that's how you deal with your homework assignments, okay. Another question? No? Uh, one more question? I'm not sure how... Uh, well, feedback. I'm not sure how, if you're the right person to ask, but it would be very really nice uh, it's very nice if there's a lot of uh, explanation for kids. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm. I'm. I would like to see things that are actually interesting for pair for grown ups uh, like things like head, kicking a ball with the head uh, but um, um, but I'm not that interested in things like how the sausage is made you know um, um, uh, there's there's uh, there's shows like Quarks and Co. Um, the, there's it goes pretty much deep there, and that's not technical things, but uh, societal th topics and, and things like that. Um, the things that are related to science, and there are uh, they go very deep, and they are monothematical, and uh, there's things like that too. And that, of course, and that's sad. There's things cut. Don, uh, like Kopf by ah, that was a show, not okay. Um, sorry, I understood that wrong. Well, it was cut, you know, and that's that's sad. But and it, they have because they have to save, and that uh, hits as uh, authors um, and uh, the science editors um, because it's uh, painful these these cuts, of course, um, because many uh, have. 
the feeling that um, uh, money is spent for things that we are, uh, isn't interesting for us, but um, um, uh, for football, for example, yeah, yeah, and. Um, Uh, there's things like this, and uh, the only thing we can do is uh, get uh, no hear heard, and then I can carry it on. Uh, but it's more important that uh, very many people uh, write uh, all because all letters are read at the uh, at the West German uh, television, and uh, it's taken serious. So uh, yeah. Nothing is thrown away, just like that. Uh, so it means that if you want to get active about that, then you have to do that and uh, you write, for example, to the TV station. Very good. So we don't have any more questions. Uh, there's another one. I have one more question. Uh, I saw the Zelling with the Mouse recently and I noticed that there was no woman and that's quite often like that and I I want that I can rem imagine that uh, there's a lot of men that uh, that you shouldn't you know I I, uh, I know I know that if it's very technical and there's only men available but uh, I think you should no notice that more. I didn't with the mouse. Uh, there were only old men for years and for recently there's Marlin uh, here and uh, she. Uh, she was uh, was uh, and her mother's uh, leave for a while, and she's working uh, with us again. And then there's a woman, and I can talk uh, about from for me. And I I, w I want to talk about this more. And uh, the the you're not a werewolf. Uh, the the show about um, um, uh, puberty that's uh, done together with a woman. Wissen macht I work with a woman and Nana Halb is uh, a topic uh, that's uh, a show that uh, women, uh, yeah, we want to, uh, you know, get creative balance there. There's obviously not every show that, uh, I'm not in every show. Um, I, it, uh, always, it's always important who made the show and uh, make the, um, made the um, show, but uh, yeah. It's, uh, do you have to tell uh, young kids that it's very, very uh, totally okay to get interested in technical things uh, if you're, or not, if you're a boy or if you're a girl, and that's uh, a part of life, and uh, we have to be a good example that uh, women are interested in that and that they can uh, describe these things, and that's important. Then, uh, thanks very much, Ralf Kaspers. So, that was it again. Thanks for listening to the translation. My name is Julian. And uh, we uh, love your feedback. So use the ha Twitter hashtag CCC, uh, CC Camp 15EN, and uh, uh, there's maybe another talk uh, next time, maybe. Thanks uh, uh, for listening. Goodbye. Bye bye.